Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the uh, Sunderland Select Board. I'd like to call it order at uh, 6.30, right on time this evening. It's uh, August 8th, 2022. First order of business, minutes of July 25th. I make a motion we accept the minutes of July 25th. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded to accept the minutes as presented for July 25th, 2022. Any further discussion? Without hearing any further discussion, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, 3-0. Next uh, up is appointment of the alternate wiring inspector. Jeffrey? Yes, so um, we wanted to appoint a another alternate wiring inspector while our current wiring inspector is um, on leave and so Paul Mr. Miller is the primary wiring inspector in Hadley and was um, interested in serving as an alternate in Sunderland at least on a temporary basis um, and I'm letting the building commissioner into the meeting right now uh, if you have any questions, but we have his license. Um, he's uh, applied for his professional license to be renewed, and the state's running a little behind on renewing those licenses, but he has applied. Um, and like I said, he's, he is the wiring inspector in Hadley, so he has, uh, he has experience doing this type of work. Thomas, you there? Yes, how's everybody doing? Hi, Tom. Hey, does uh, Paul have, does he all, is he current on all his uh, updates and everything? Yes. Okay. Yes, he's current. He's been the electrical assistant for quite a few years in Hadley, but he's been over a year now with the uh, regular electrical inspector in Hadley as well. Okay. I just want to make sure he's had his, uh, his yearly code updates, so we know that those are kind of important. Okay. Crystal? I have no questions. None for me either. Daniel? Anything else, Jeffrey? No. Nope. So, and you're just going to use them as needed, Tom? Okay. Uh, at this time, I'll entertain a motion for the uh, appointment. Do you have how long the term is for? To the Is it the one year? Yeah, I think it will be through June 30th. Okay. June 30th, 2023. Okay, so I will entertain a motion to appoint Paul Miller as the alternate wire inspection inspector to fill the position until June 30th of 2023. Have right. a motion? Great right, motion. We appoint okay. Paul Miller until June 30th, 2023. Seconded. Okay, motion made and seconded. All those in favor of appointment of Paul Miller, please uh, signify by saying aye. 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 All right, Tom, you have yourself uh, another helper. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up is award of gas and diesel bids. Yep, so annually we go out for our gas and mm. diesel bids. Um, this year we had uh, three respondents for the diesel bid. Um, the lowest bidder was um, Kiris at 20 cents over Springfield average price plus 24 cents state tax. Um, the other bids were 50% Oh, uh, excuse me, 50 cents over Springfield average price um, or 54 cents over Springfield average price. So that, that was the low bidder for the variable price. Given the fluctuations in gas and diesel prices right now, we expect them to go back down. Um, so the Highway Super is recommending um, accepting the variable bids. And then for gasoline, the Low bidder was Sandry, um, which was 50 cents over the Springfield average price. Now, how does that come? How does that compare to last year? The uh, percentage. 
for the the rates? I believe that last year we had a fixed rate, and I think it, I, if I recall, it was a little over two dollars. Um, but I can try and find that. And the town still have to pay state tax, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. And these these bids are for the highway department's machinery. Is that what the gasoline and diesel is being used for? Uh, yes, uh, and not just highway. Um, it's the gas for our fire engines and police vehicles as well. Gotcha. Thank you. So, so this year, basically, what we we're saying is that we uh, we're going to pay according to whatever the price is in Springfield, right? With the yeah. with the adder. Yeah. Okay. And then in fiscal year twenty one, so the adder was forty six cents above okay. Springfield rate. So in line. All right. It's not bad. We have then. a hand raised from the audience. Go ahead, Cindy. Cindy. Okay, I was just telling you that I texted you the um, <laughs> the sheet from last year with the bids. Oh. So you're all good. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, uh, Jeff, what do you want for your recommendation in? Uh, recommendation to award the diesel contract to. Kiaris Oil and the gasoline contract to AR Sandy. Okay. Motion? I motion we award diesel to Kiaris and gasoline to AR Sandry. Seconded. A motion made and seconded to uh, approve the recommendations of the town administrator for fuel, oil, and to gas. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, three zero, please. Thank you. Okay, next up is review the MOUs for the South County Senior Center and the South County EMS. So, so basically, um, I know Nathaniel is new on the board, and Crystal, um, this is her start of her second year. But South County EMS and South County Senior Center, we work on by memorandum of understanding with the two former towns, Deerfield and Whiteley. I, I personally think the South County EMS and you, Jeff, you may have an opinion also, but I think that much more formalized with South County EMS than the South County Senior Center. So I, I, what, what I did is I thought that it'd be advantageous for, for you both to have an opportunity to review the both agreements mm -hmm. so that um, I, I'm particularly concerned about the South County Senior Center in particular that right now it's kind of Jennifer is doing a great job as a director, but one of the things that we need to do is find a home for the senior center. Mm -hmm. And right now, we really we're not we're not we're not working as a well-oiled machine on that. Um, Deerfield may have a plan, Whiteley may have a plan, Sunderland ha may have a plan, but it's not being communicated with the other towns, and more importantly, it's not being communicated with the seniors what the plan is. So there's a lot of trepidation out there about where we're going. So I'd, if possible, I'd like us to, to review those things and 
I'm our rep on the senior center, and what I'm proposing to do is try to put a plan out there. So if the town of Deerfield, and, and one of the things I think, it, my perspective, is that Deerfield believes that they have to fund the senior center them, all themselves for some reason. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that's true. I, I, think, I think we need to discuss, I've always said, personally, I think the senior center, it, it's, it fits in Deerfield. A, because they have a majority of the people, plus if it's in the center of their community, if, they ha if there's a place in the center of their community, it fits that, and, it, and, and we're used to Deerfield, Sunderland, Whiteley are used to going there to get it. I still think we can do a better job on transportation, so that we, we will continue that, but long term, if, if Deerfield doesn't feel that they can, they shouldn't feel that they have to do everything by themselves. And we, we built Frontier Regional School, the four towns together. So I don't understand why the three towns that are in the district wouldn't work on something. If, and, and so I, I want to I I flush that out a little bit stronger and try to say, well, if, if you don't have a site in the center of town, and, and I don't think the seniors should settle for an okay place. It should be a good place. Um, and, I, and I did hear something from one of the new board members in Deerfield who said that, I believe, what I've been told, is that you know the library, he considered there are more people who use the library than the senior center. And, and he may have a point. Um, that being said, I still think we all should get together and really have that discussion. And, and I know it's a tough discussion right now because the assets are all, all owned by Deerfield and they're not owned by us. So, so I, but long story short, I think it's important that we take a read of it and start to familiarize yourself because it may be coming more to the come more to the fore, forefront of the, the remainder of the year. Okay? Sounds good. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, do you want this to be um, a continuing item under old business to revisit or I'll add it if any of the I would say come back come back in a month. Okay. Come back in a month and and hopefully we'll, by then we'll have a South County Senior Center meeting. I know Jennifer's out right now and and we can dress, we can we can address this a little, a little more, okay. Yep. But, but I, 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 you know, I, I think we may have other options, you know. I, I, you know, there may be someone that's listening or watching the program that they may have, they may have a thought on, on where we could look for a senior center. Maybe there's a business person out there that has a, a, a place he'd just be willing to, uh, to lease it or to work with a town to towns to make it happen in, in any of our communities, Sunderland, Deerfield, and or Whiteley. So I just think we need to make it, we need to move forward with this. All right. So, yeah, so if we could do that again, Jeffrey. So uh, old business, you have ARPA? Yes. So I guess two updates. We got the first disbursement of the second tranche of funding um, so uh, we had which was a hundred and eighty nine thousand nine hundred and twenty one dollars that's the direct allocation then there's an allocation that goes to the county and then the county is supposed to give it to us my understanding is that it goes to the state because we don't really have county governments in Massachusetts, or most counties don't have functional county governments. Um, so it goes to the state and then they have to disperse it to us. So um, there's about another $350,000 uh, expected. Um, 
And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because the computer, the laptop that's used for the booking room in the police station um, is very old. It was put into service. <laughs> it's old enough that it could vote this year. It's an 18 year old computer um, and it has an operating system that is 20 years old. Um, the computer no longer keeps track of time well and um, we discovered this because that was one of the things that the uh, when the state inspects um, jail cells they said hey your booking computer is not does not have the correct time so we wanted to replace that 2004 computer with uh, 2002 Windows XP Professional, which by the way, the operating system is also no longer supported, um, with a new computer that you know is, is not packed with lots of features um, because they're not needed. They just need something that they can access the printer, they can access the network, it can keep track of time, and I think that there's a special program that they need to have on there. Um, and uh, so they're we got a proposal um, for a new computer with uh, Windows 10 Pro, which I want to say is the latest, but I think Windows 11 is either out or coming out shortly. Um, but obviously much, much newer technology, and that would cost, um, including shipping, $922.59. So as far as there's nothing that would need to be done as far as cabling, anything for the location where everything is fine there? Yes, the I think they'd use the, the wireless network for the, okay. for the laptop. Yep. And this definitely comes wireless ready? Yes, I got the full spec sheet, wireless, okay. EBG. Yeah. Okay, no, that's fine. And then just because we've done this more than once as of late. Um, do we, uh, cables, cords, all that stuff? As far as I know, all they need to do is plug it in, but I will confirm, and if you wanna, <laughs> if you wanna put a, a $50 allowance for cables or yes. cords, then I'm- For the possibility, yeah. just because it seems like everything we've gotten recently has slightly gone over and it's been due to some type of hardware issue. Yep. So what are you saying? Nine, $975? I mean, if you want to go with that. I mean, they don't have to spend it, right? No. No. But, no. you know, you get computers now and, you know, you don't have a mouse, so you don't have, you know. Understood. You can make a motion for 975. All right. Or a thousand, whatever you want. We could just say no. And not give them a new computer? Yeah, you could. Well, yeah, we could, but okay. I don't think that's a great idea. <laughs> I hey. mean, and you can always. I mean, how much are abacuses these days, really? <laughs> motion. I motion we um, <clears throat> work with this proposal for a new laptop for the booking room, not to exceed 975. I second it. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? So, so Jeff, at, at some point, can we inventory what the town of Sunderland has for computers and what their life expectancy are so we can put a budget together as far as where we're going with our uh, IT? Yep. Okay. And just to clarify, that's all Town of Sunderland, uh, library, highway, schools, or school separate? School separate. Okay. But all the other departments, yeah. police. Okay. Yep. All right. So I, I think we should inventory that stuff. We should have it, age, et cetera. And, and so you can start planning and, and looking at the operating I, I And again, you know, we need to know what the assessors and... and building inspector and, and everybody has so that we can make 
and, and again, it may be, you know, you, you may find out that you have 10 computers that have got to be replaced in the next three years. You could go out for a bid for 10 computers. Yep. Right? Instead of doing piecemeal, you, you may get those at 750 instead of 1,000. Yep. So. Yep. All right? Yep. All right. And, and then, then we can do it that way. All right. So we have a motion made and seconded for expenditure of ARP of 970 up to $975 for the replacement of the booking computer. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Okay, next up is uh, policies and guidelines. Ready to vote on these, Jeffrey? Yes. Um, if you want to go through in the order listed, I'll mention yep. any changes. Accepted rate hearing guidelines? No changes. Okay, motion made to accept. I, I motion made to accept. Seconded. Okay, motion made seconded on accepted rate hall hearing guidelines. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Flammable storage license hearing guidelines. No changes. Motion. Aye, motion. This is the. The flammable storage license. Oh, okay. Guidelines. I motion the flammable storage licensing. Okay, we have a motion made. Seconded. And seconded on the uh, flammable storage. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Next, next up is the uh, no reservice policy. No changes. Right, I motion we accept the notary services policy. Seconded. All those in favor of the uh, notary service policy signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero, Jeff. Permit expiration policy. So this one I did change. Um, there, there was some trepidation, I'll use the word you used, um, from some of the departments that felt like it would be confusing having an overarching policy that might conflict with um, other dates that are set by law or regulation. Um, so what I did in this draft is limited to select board and sewer commissioner um, permits. The only other permit that I was able to find that I that we could include if you wanted to um, that I think would be applicable would be the uh, curb cut permit that the highway superintendent gives when people are putting in a new driveway or something like that. Um, that does not have an expiration set by date. And I could see somebody applying for it, not cutting the curb, and then coming back years and years later and saying, I have a permit. Um, so if you want, I could add it and come back with this. Um, if you want to include all town issued permits, then I would suggest uh, I will work with the departments to get more clarity and come back with a more clear policy. Um, you know, for me, I, I, I was really wondering why, what, what, what the driving force of this was. I, I, I didn't know we had a problem with the expiration of appointments or, and such. So I thought everything we did, we put expirations on. Just like, just like the, the alternate building or electrical was like, well, how long is a term for? You know what I mean? So is there, were there specific examples of concerns that you had? Uh, well, yeah, the sewer connection, um, we had somebody who was granted a sewer connection permit in the 1980s that came back and said, I have a sewer connection permit and I would like to do it now. And that was 40 years ago. Okay. Uh, is, That's that, the only example I have. All right, so, so to get, so he's put together, he said he had a sewer connection permit, right? So, but to actually engage that, you have to talk to the highway superintendent and the sewer, right? right. And make sure that it's appropriate. Right. 
so we're still we're still protected because it's not like they would just start cutting do a road cut or you know start digging across the street correct Good. Are, are the permits revocable to begin with? Are we, do we have the process in place to be able to revoke a permit for whatever reason we would have to do so? I'm not sure about that. I'm not. All right, let's hold off on that. Okay. That's a good question, Nathaniel and Joe. Yeah, let's, let's figure so out some answers on those and then we can read them. But the benefit of this is the research required to look up a 40 year old permit, also, right? Yeah. That's manpower hours for this building to look that up versus something that if it's only good for a year, no one's stuck researching something f potentially 40 years old to see if it really exists. Right. Yep. Well, like a building permit, a building permit by code is only good for so long. Correct. Right? Yep. So, would we, okay, so would we be better off having a generic policy like this, or would we be better off in our sewer regs to just vote a, to put something in the sewer regs? Yep, we can absolutely put something in the sewer regs. You know, that if you have, that it's good for two years. Yeah. Or um, you, 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 you make a good point also, Crystal, that like somebody comes in and say we had something from 40 years ago. Well, I'm, I'm pretty sure none of us are going to be around in 40 years. Well, I might be. I will only be 98. I could still be here. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's wishful thinking, I okay. know. <laughs> okay. You'd probably be in Brattleboro if you were still on the board, but uh, <laughs> you'd be doing distance distance meetings after sure. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yeah, let's let's bring that one back, okay, Jeff? Okay. Uh, do you want me to bring back a uh, potential amendment to the Yes. Sewer? Okay. Yeah. Uh vehicle marking policy. Uh the two changes based on the discussion at the last meeting are the last two sentences um, adding vehicles shall be marked within 30 days of being put into service yep. and the policy does not apply to unmarked police vehicles and any temporary vehicles used by the town for less than 90 days. I just thought defining temporary would yeah. be helpful. I'm not married to 90 days. No. Um, that sounds good. You know, I, I'm, I think this is actually uh, a, if a long overdue thing because this is just good management. Just habits, uh, and and it just and it, when it says vehicles, it means like tractors and all vehicles, or just over the road registered vehicles. Um, I, th I would say. All vehicles should have it. I would too. Yeah. I mean, I guess I would say, you know, if we wound up buying a zero turn mower, probably don't need to mark that. Actually, I would say you would. You would? Okay. Well, I, I just know that what happened, there was a community college out in the eastern part of the state, and the guy that ran the facilities just happened to have a landscape service. And he hired his father. Can you guess where the store is going to go? Yes. Uh, yes. No, and, exactly and they, had, they, all, they had white trucks. And the payloader, and they had, and they had a trailer, and the payloader um, would not always be on that campus. And it was a community college, and it, not Greenfield or Holyoke, or it's on the eastern part of the state. But, and they found, the, the, the trailer was, wasn't marked, the trucks weren't marked, and they would just change out license plates. So, hmm. um, so I, I, don't, I, I think town-owned property is fine. Okay. Okay. So bring that back to specify in there about all vehicles, all 
um, it says all town all vehicles, vehicles. All town vehicles. Are consistently marked yeah. and identified. All right. So, all right. All right. So I'll take a motion then. A motion we accept the vehicle marking policy. Seconded. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tree zero. Jeff. Uh, select board updates. Nothing. I like summer. <laughs> Nathaniel? Uh, nope. I also like summer. Um, committees. The, the um, South County Senior Center um, had a visit by Congressman McGovern the other day. Right? Mm -hmm. um, Jennifer's doing a really good job. Jeff, myself, and Jennifer sat down with the owner of <coughs> a property. We were voted that the, the Board of Oversight of the Senior Center designated us as people to, to enter negotiations with the uh, landlord, and we did. And I think we met all their requirements plus. Um, so now we sent that to the town of Deerfield for ratification, I think. Yes. It hasn't yeah. probably happened, has it? Uh, not, but uh, Deerfield sent a draft lease to the property owners who reviewed it, sent back some comments, and we're waiting for Deerfield Council to review those comments. Oh, of course. <coughs> All right. So we're, we're moving on. Ba basically, our senior center staff has not had a place to do their business. So they've been working out of a place that they're not supposed to be in. So we think it's time for them to move. So they're working on that. All right, town administrator updates. Uh, just two updates. Um, we received the I'm not going to get this right, but the the park grant funds, the, I think it's a state match. It's not a reimbursement. I don't know. They, they have their terminology, but we received the funds that we were supposed to receive for the park grant, which was uh, the kayak kiosk and the walkway down the boat ramp. So um, very excited that that project is done and, and fully funded. Um, so next we're going to be turning to the restrooms and renovation of that. Um, and then the second is we had, I had had discussions with UMass about uh, various wastewater testing. Um, the decision was to go with the free state um, surveillance testing and UMass came back and said, hey, we'd be really interested in testing at your wastewater treatment plant at no cost if we can also reach out to private property owners who have, they called it community uh, wastewater systems, which I understand is like shared septic or something else. So I said, yeah, we don't control those, the town, we can certainly give you contact information and you can reach out to them. But um, I wanted to let you know and make sure that the select board had no concerns with uh, UMass testing at the wastewater treatment plant if they can find another. So as far as shared septic, do we really, can you even think of an example of that in town? Yeah, I could think of two. No, no. The flats. Mm -hmm. And where else? Mount Toby Estates, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, there, I don't, you know, I, I don't think button ball, but I could see a community like that if it wasn't on sewer, um, like yeah. shared condos, but I don't, I can't think of yeah. another one. I, I, Toby didn't even the Mount Toby States, those are the apartments up on 47, right? Yes, that's Does right. that include the condos right before them on 47? Or is that a separate? I believe it's separate. Is it? But I'll, I okay. could check because they might be on, um, they might be on their own system as well. I would assume that they there. would be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I just know UMass has been doing testing, and we hear. I kind of, I kind of um, was interested when they, the state sent out the thing, even from our state senator about MIT, and and it's great that MIT was doing it, but I, UMass has been doing it since day one. So, um, and. 
they also have a very, very uh, progressive system when it comes to wastewater and potable water that they are very engaged in that. So I, if, if, they, if, if we can work with them, I would wholeheartedly recommend it because they're really good. Yep. Very good. So we do have a, another question about that testing, just because when we're over at the school, taking the little tour and boil and all that stuff in the place in the front there. Mm -hmm. is you can that, touch that. I was going to say, I think that would be you can, you can a great, that. you know, if they were looking for sites to test. So my, I will mention it. My understanding is that they wanted to compare smaller community systems with a m more major like town wide yeah. wastewater treatment plant so that in a lot of smaller towns you have that mix so yeah. that they can provide better data to towns down the road. Yeah. That being said, I'll ask them about that, and there's still the option if we want to pay per test at that location, we could do that too. Yeah, I mean, I just think that's, after having seen that location and the accessibility there, yeah. it would, even just later on down the road, if we ever get into one of these major uprises and Is that it? That's it. Okay. Our uh, next meeting will, oh, our mandatory remote meeting letter to legislators. Jeff, that was a very good letter. Thank you. That was an excellent letter. Um, and, and again, it's, it's not that we're against, have, I mean, we've been doing open meeting with FCAT forever, for, for a long time. We were one of the first communities to have and, and when we first started, there was, come, there was some pushback on, on doing that, but we, we've had meetings, and, and, but when they, when they talk about having mandatory remote meetings for every board and committee, there, I mean, I, A, just getting it set up would, is a very, it's, so I don't quite understand how, how they would do that, unless the state's gonna provide a, the service and the towns can just use it, that's fine. But um, again, I, and sometimes in, in the tell, and to tell, I, I, again, I can, I can see a town being responsible for its committees and boards, um, but to subject committee members, board members, um, to be personal liable because a meeting is, is or is not on a, <coughs> that's kind of difficult yeah. also. So I, I, so I thought your money, I, I again, I, I think, you know, I don't know if Crystal and Nathaniel have any aversions, but I would say we would continue to do what we're doing now because our job is to reach as many people as possible and to have Tom Quinlan uh, come on a meeting where you can just pop on the TV for 30 seconds instead of having to sit here and wait for hours makes a hell of a lot more sense to me than having somebody sit in the thing. At the same time, it's imp I still think it's important that people come to meetings sometimes to express their opinions and I do have a concerned about how to maintain decorum if everybody's yelling on Zoom. I've been in those meetings too, so I, I just think there's, there's some things that need to be, it's easy, we can silence, every, we can just silence everybody, but then the job of an open meeting is for everybody to hear what's going on in the meeting, so if we just, if we just shut everybody off, then we're not accomplishing the goal of the open meeting one. So, anyway, so I thought, very good letter. It was a good letter, I thought. Our next meeting is October, uh, October. <laughs> October 22nd, okay. <sighs> August 22nd, uh, 2022, so 10-22. two months off, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> two months off? Well, that'd be two months if we go to October. I know, that's what I'm thinking. I'm say, if you want to give me two months off, I'm taking it. Good. 
Uh, so the next meeting is August 22nd, 2022. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I motion we adjourn. Seconded. We have a motion made and second to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Jeff, declare three zero, and we are out at uh, Comcast Supplied 710. Thank you, everybody.